Hey guys, I'm Ashton back from Quantum Blackboard, and we're here to talk about the Bose-Einstein condensate, the fifth state of matter. You didn't tell me we were taping a video. Okay then. So what is the Bose-Einstein condensate? Well, it's the fifth state of matter in which the atoms of an element are compressed and cooled down at a rate to where they all vibrate at the same frequency and are in the same quantum state. Uh, uh, I'm going to give you the definition of a boson because these atoms have to be uh, made up particularly of bosons. A boson is a subatomic particle, such as a photon, that has a zero or integral spin and fits the description given by S. N. Bose and Albert Einstein. Uh, who invented the Bose-Einstein condensate, or at least came up with it? You got it, S. N. Bose and Albert Einstein in 1924 and 1925. So, this could be used to detect particles that are supposed to exist, but are too dangerous to actually investigate, because you've got a super atom because they all act as one. Here's Max to explain that phenomenon. So imagine you have 30 people, and you all want to put them in a line. But if one person steps out of the line, then the whole thing is messed up. And so how do you fix that problem? Well, in the Bose-Einstein condensate, if one person, or atom, steps out of the line, then the rest of the line instantly follows it. So that's what's good about the Bose-Einstein condensate. It, they all act as one atom because they're vibrating at the same frequency and in the same quantum state. So how can this be used? Well, imagine a laser. Uh, like a laser or a flashlight today, it's just a bunch of photons thrown onto an area that's determined by the amount of lights in the laser. But with the Bose-Einstein condensate, this actually can direct, and they, uh, they, this can be directed, and they all go in the same line, which is really amazing. So, what is the history of the Bose-Einstein condensate? I told you that it was theorized in 1924 and 1925, but it was first discovered in 1995 at the University of Colorado lab, where they condensed 2,000 rubidium atoms which, and, and cooled them to 170 nanokelvin, which is 170 billionths of a Kelvin above absolute zero. It's crazy cold. And they soon, after they condensed these bosons, they started condensing isotopes, molecules, quasi-particles, and photons. And we're here to tell you what those are. What are isotopes? So you know how the elements on the periodic table are governed by how many protons they have. They are atomic numbers. So hydrogen is one, helium is two, um, lithium is three. Well, the, the thing is, is isotopes are governed by how many neutrons it has. So, um, how you figure this out is you subtract um, the, so you add the amount of protons by the amount of neutrons and that gets you it. So, if you have carbon, carbon 13, then you subtract 6 by it and you get 7. So, it has 7 neutrons and that is isotope 7 of carbon. So a quasi-particle is a phenomenon in which a system, like a solid on Earth, acts as if it was flying through free space. It's very interesting and it's very complicated how it works, but basically its behavior as if it was in space. Photons are massless particles that follow the wave-particle duality. They are both particles and waves. They, they, they carry all forms of electromagnetic radiation and vary from, vary from UV radiation to visible light to gamma rays. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. Come in here. Yes. Okay, yes. Please subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. If you're watching on the site, thank you. Uh, you remember, you can go to our site, quantumblackboard.com, to view all our videos, become a member for free with cool benefits. You can check that out again on yes. quantumblackboard.com. Uh, teach, download our teacher tools, and view our new articles section. We've got an article about hydrogen that you can read and download. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest, and Google+.